Hi everyone, in this video I'll be installing Zorin OS in a dual boot setup with Windows. Zorin OS is an Ubuntu based distribution that can look very similar to Windows or Mac. It's easy to install and also easy to use. And the system requirements for it, the minimum hardware you need, CPU 1 GHz, dual core Intel or AMD 64-bit CPU, RAM 1.5 GB, and storage 15 GB for the core, 32 GB for education, and 40 GB for the Pro. And for this video, I'm going to be installing the core version. The core version and the education versions are free. And the Pro version, you'll have to pay for it. And display is 1024 by 768. So it's great for older hardware. I'll also need a minimum 4 GB USB drive for the Zorin OS ISO installation media. And now I'm going to download Zorin OS, the core version. I'm going to go to Zorin.com and then I'm going to hit download. Here's the pro version. And then here's core. And it's asking you for email or you can just skip and it's going to download. Next thing I need to get is Rufus. I'm going to rufus.ie and Rufus will allow me to create a bootable USB drive with Zorin OS on it. So I'm going to download it. Once both are downloaded, going to my downloads folder and going to start up Rufus. Yes. And I'm selecting my USB drive, 32 gigabytes, and select Zorin. And I'll set it as GPT, partition scheme, and UFI, and start. OK. OK. OK, it has completed. Close. And now I'm going to open up Disk Management. And here's my C drive, and I'm going to allocate space for Zorin OS. And I'm going to shrink. And I'm going to leave 50 gigabytes for Zorin. I'm going to close. All right, now I'm going to restart my computer, go into the BIOS, confirm that secure boot is disabled, and also as well as confirm that the USB drive will boot first. For me to go in the BIOS, I have to hit delete. And for me, I have to go to security, secure boot, and secure boot, ensure it's disabled. Hit escape. Next under boot, confirm that the USB drive is selected as the first boot option, and then save changes and reset. Okay, it's booted the USB drive, so I'm gonna select try or install Zorin OS. And if you're having an issue, select save graphics. And if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you can select the third option, modern NVIDIA drivers. So for me, I am gonna select the first option. All right, so it's gonna do an integrity check. Before installing, I want to give some background. In Windows, you would have a 100 megabyte EFI partition where the boot files are stored. And when you generally install Zorin, it would install in the same EFI partition. There is sufficient space on it and it works fine, but Microsoft is known for removing anything that is not related to Windows in the EFI partition. And this can happen after a Windows update. At first, it may seem all is well after the install. Everything is there and working. But months later, after a Windows update, your Zorin information in the EFI partition will be gone and you won't be able to boot into it. So to avoid this, I will be installing using a separate EFI partition for Zorin. And as the installer has an issue in having a separate EFI partition, I will be doing an additional step before starting the install. Close this install window, quit, open up a terminal, First, I'm gonna to check to see my disk, sudo fdisk-l, and gonna find my disk here, and it's the NVMe drive here, and we can see here the EFI partition and a Microsoft reserved partition, and then my C drive, the 416 gigabytes here, and then there's the Windows recovery environment. So I'm gonna copy this, type in parted, paste in the disk, you need to sudo in for that. So sudo parted and then P to print. And this will list my partitions. 
and it's the first one I'm going to change. So I'm going to remove the boot flag there and then I'll add it back in after the install is complete. Hit P again to print and we see it's removed. So that's good. Q to quit, close. Now going to start the install, select my language, keyboard. I don't want to participate. Installation type, something else, continue. All right, it shows my disk here and I'm going to select my free space and then hit the plus sign to create a new partition. And then I'll create a 512 megabytes partition. And this is going to be the EFI partition for Zorin. EFI, okay. And it has been added in and going back to free space plus and to make it easy, the rest of the space, I'm going to use it for slash. Of course, you can divide it as you would like for different mount points. So for example, slash home, slash user, var, serve, etc. And so I'm just going to leave it for slash for root. Okay. All right. We see it has been added. And then device for bootloader installation. It's going to be my drive here. And then install now. Right, changes to disk, continue. Select your time zone, put in your name, computer name, and password. Require my password to log in, continue. And you can select on the arrow here and it'll show the status. All right, the install has finished and going to hit continue testing. I'm going to open up a terminal and going to go back into parted, P to print, and then we're going to put the boot flag back on for partition number one, P to print, Q to quit. And next I'm going to run EFI boot manager. And this command will show the boot order for the EFI entries. So we see here the boot order first, it's 0000, which is Ubuntu. And next it will be 0003. And then finally it will be 0002. So from this, it should be booting Ubuntu. But to confirm, I'm going to restart and go into the BIOS. All right, and I'm in the BIOS. I'm going to boot. And we see here boot option number one, it's the USB drive. The boot option number two, it's the hard disk, but it's the Windows Boot Manager. So I'm going to fix that. Earlier from the EFI boot manager command, we saw that it should be booting Ubuntu, but we see Windows boot manager is first, so have to fix that. Going to select Ubuntu. And I am going to unplug my USB drive. I no longer need the installation media. I'm going to save changes and reset. All right, so it's booted into Zorin, so that's good. But there is no dual boot menu here. So going to fix that by installing Grub. I'm going to log in. Open up a terminal. I'm going to sudo in. Type my password. And I am going to install a Grub. All right. So the target is going to be x86 underscore 64 EFI. And then the EFI directory is going to be slash boot slash EFI. I'm going to do a recheck. Enter. All right, so it's been installed, so that's good. Next, I am going to go into the Etsy default grub file. And I'm going to go to the bottom. And I'm going to add in grub underscore disable underscore OS prober equals false. Control X to save. Yes. And the file name to write. Enter. And grub disable OS Prober to false will allow OS Prober to look for other operating systems. So Windows. All right, now I'm going to run OS Prober. All right, it's found the Windows Boot Manager, so that's good. And now I'm going to run grub make config. So now I'll create a new grub configuration file. It was successful. And we see at the bottom here, it's found the Windows Boot Manager, so that's good. And now I'm going to restart. All right, we see here Grub comes up and we got Zorin. And we also have the Windows Boot Manager at the bottom. 
and I'm going to go into Zorin just to confirm. All right, it's booted into Zorin. Now I'm going to restart and make sure I can boot into Windows. Select Windows Boot Manager. All right, it's booted into Windows. So that's it. That's how you can install Zorin in a dual boot setup with Windows using a separate EFI partition. I hope this video was useful and I thank you for watching. Bye now.